I don't know how many couples, couples in general, but then also couples that work together are aligned and understand, hey, one of the things that, again, I know, and I know it from you guys too, is that you guys are each other's biggest cheerleaders. The belief that you have in each other is part of what makes you so powerful. The first thing is, and you used the word earlier, you said team. That's the first thing to understand. It's not a hierarchy, it's not an org chart, it's a team, and the team is pulling in the same direction. It starts there, because if it doesn't start there, then there are gonna be reasons to compete, and I don't need to compete with my wife, nor are competing with me. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode, actually a very special episode of the Wealthy Contractor Podcast. And this is being released in February, the month of love and Valentine's Day. And so we thought a few years back, me and Addie interviewed uh, a couple of couples that work together. And we thought, hey, we would bring that back. And who better to bring that back with than Pat Gottlieb and her husband, Brian Gottlieb. Many of you know Brian, but you may not know the woman behind Brian, Pat Gottlieb. And of course, the woman that, you know, I can do any of what I do without Addie is here as well. And so we're going to have a very interesting conversation today, not necessarily about, we're not going to talk about sales and marketing and all of that stuff. We're going to talk a lot about mindset and we're going to talk about probably about working together because I know that in our community, there are a lot of husband and wife teams out there. And I know me and Addy get asked all the time, how the hell do you guys do it? So it'll be interesting to, to get your take. So with all of that said, I want to go, Kat, can you give everybody a little bit of your background? I just yeah. three minutes ago discovered that you had a business that you sold before. So can you give us a little bit of your background? Sure. Yeah, so I've um, always been in the creative industries, self-employed since I was 27. So a very strong independent streak. And that's one of the ways he and I connected. So I had a business called uh, Cat Blue Art and Design, produced very high-end, very unique art and design for primarily the uh, wedding in industry. I sold that business in, I think, 2014. Great. Right. So, okay. Yeah. Really cool stuff too, by the way. It was, she really built a wonderful business. Uh, the, the majority of her, her her clients were international. It was really cool. Oh, that, that is cool. Really great business. Yes. Okay. Yes. About 90% were international clients. Cool. And it's not really easy to sell a, a, an art business. So, you know, some of what Brian and I learned in that process of successfully closing that type of business or, or selling it. Uh, having it acquired was kind of a prelude to what he did going forward with developing his businesses. So it's kind of worked together. Yeah. Nice. And I know there's an updated version of this, but for those of you that could uh, see us and you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see the covers of Kathy's books. I have one version. It says it's manifest your best every day. And yes. then there's a, I guess that's the new version over yes. there. That's what and, it would look like online. Yeah. And what's so cool about this. So it's a 52 week planner. Right. And I love it that it's called manifest your best. Correct. So tell us what does it mean to manifest and how do you manifest your best every day? So manifestation, I think a lot of people kind of have an understanding of what that means these days, thanks to social media, I think really allow that kind of message and the law of attraction to be people kind of understand it maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. But what manifest means is to make real. So like even in just a primary understanding of that word, but manifestation and the law of attraction um, talks about the idea of being able to take maybe just a thought or an idea that you have a goal, a dream, and then make it, you know, actualize it. So it's very tied into goal achievement, personal development. And so manifest your best is my approach to manifestation. 
which at the core of it is understanding who you are authentically and becoming the best version of yourself. And while you do that, then all those other really cool things that you want to acquire or achieve, they all kind of just flow into your life when you're operating under the right North Star, I guess you would say. Yeah. yeah. So it's the right framework in your mind. Yeah. To set yourself up for success every day. Absolutely. And I, and we were talking a little bit earlier that, you know, success happens first, I think, in your mindset. And if you look at the law of attraction, one of the principles of law of attraction is what you focus on expands in your reality. So if you want to find success in your life, look for hints that it's already manifesting in your current life, right? So what you look for, you will find. So if you want to find opportunity, you'll find opportunity. If you want to find problems in your life, guess what you'll find? So it's all about mindset and focus and knowing what you really want out of life. You know, if I could share a quick little story, one of the early goals of uh, the Tundraland business was the idea that, that I wanted to become the best place in Wisconsin to work. So in all of my ads early on, <laughs> because I didn't have the title yet, it would be considered to be one of the best places to work in Wisconsin. <laughs> but eventually, I then started winning the award year after year after year. But, you know, it, it all starts by, you know, what what do you want to become? Because it allows you then to devote your personal resources, your energy towards those sort of things. That's what's so cool about the journal. The journal really helps people say, okay, I have this thing, this idea, but how do I get it to the next step? How do I get it to move forward? And I think by by keeping it top of mind every day, well, you know, the likelihood of achieving it, you know, is increases significantly. You said something there that is really, really, really important. Well, you said a lot of things. Everything you say is important, but it, you used a word in there that's very important. And you said become or becoming. And one of the things that you, you, all of us know in growing a business is we could provide people with all the tactics and all the strategies and all we could lay out a marketing plan we can give you a selling system we can give you a financial model we can give you all of that stuff but if you here in your head aren't working on becoming the leader that will run and take a business from a million to five million five million to ten whatever the goal is for each individual person because we're all different if you are not becoming that person and working on becoming the person that can become a millionaire that can live in the, their dream house that can build a great business that doesn't that doesn't require them to be there if you're not working on the becoming part none of all that rest of that stuff doesn't matter i don't i don't know what you guys how you guys will feel about this statement but you know doing this now for 30 something years on my own, basically, like you guys, I really think that success is 90% in business and in life, but it's 90% mindset and it's 10% skill set. Because again, you could buy skill set, you can rent it, borrow it, you can model it. What do you think about that statement? Yeah. Well, I also think it's interesting that for sure, mindset, whether it's individual mindset or when you look at your team mindset, the mindset of your team inside of your business, how your team thinks affects how they feel, which affects how they act, which determines how they behave, both in your presence and in your absence. And how mm -hmm. your team performs will, without a doubt, define the success or the failure of your business. But, you know, it's interesting going back to what you were saying, though, if I may, is that when we think about manifestation and you know do we want to manifest a mercedes or something like that or i think it's an important process to go through what do i need to become what yeah. what what type of leader do i need to be to in order so that i can have a mercedes and i think yeah and I, i'd love to hear my wife's opinion on that well that's everything to me i mean that's why i said you know becoming the best version of yourself is the absolute most important thing. Everything flows from there. And part of learning and figuring out what is your best version is to get real authentic and to really truly understand yourself and understand what truly motivates you. Because if you really get to know that part of you, then everything can happen from there. I think a lot of people will arbitrarily set up goals for themselves or for their business, but if they don't authentically believe it can happen, 
and believe that it's the right thing to chase, we lose motivation for it. Or um, if we don't have the belief, how can we expect our team around us to have a belief? Patty, I know this subject is near and dear to you as well. Uh, Care to share your your thoughts on what we're chatting about here? For me, manifestation, yeah, it all starts also with the mind. I, I, my daughter, we, we dropped, well, she left to college for her last semester. And I had a conversation with her about dreaming. And I said, I know this is a, an interesting time in your life because it's the last semester. You're getting ready to, to, you know, leave something behind to start something new, right? And, and become the woman. And I, and I shared with her my story. I said, when I was your age, I had a vision of the woman I wanted to become. I remember driving to school, you know, wanting a Jeep Wrangler and driving the freeway with, you know, all the doors off, just that sense of freedom being that person. That that later evolved into a convertible car, me wearing a suit. Like I had a, a vision of the person that I wanted to become. And I was telling her, I think you need to dream and you need to really connect with who you want to be because I am living today the dream that started many, many years ago. You know, I became that person. So to me, it's also a lot about dreaming about the life you want, the relationships you want, the people you want, the love, the family, the house. So I, I'm totally on board with everything you're saying because it does start with what you're thinking here, what is possible for you, but it also def- you know starts with a, a dream for yourself. And part of that is also surrounding yourself with people that believe in you and support you yeah. and want your only the best instead of you know the alternative. And I think being that this is about relationships, this this talk, I think that's absolutely critical. At least it was for me to have a partner who not only believed in me but would actively support my goals and aspirations and to have somebody who at times believed in me more than I believed in myself. I mean, that's the stuff of soulmates as far as I'm concerned. So I feel very fortunate to have this guy. It's so funny that you just said what you said, because our the entire theme of Accelerate this year, which will have passed by the time this goes out, but you guys will see this, is about surrounding yourself. There's this beautiful quote, surround yourself with the dreamers and the doers, the thinkers and the believers. But most of all, surround yourself with those that are going to believe in you, even when you don't believe in yourself. And by the way, that is not an easy thing to find in the world, is it? I don't know if you guys experienced this or not, but as you grow and as you you grow, not only as a person, but financially you grow and your social circle maybe starts to grow. There's a lot of people that were there before that can't go with you. And what happens, and I'm seeing this a lot, is that those people, if you allow them to, will not let you grow, they'll drag you back down. You know, there's a whole thing about the bucket of crabs theory. One crab's trying to get out of the bucket. The other ones are like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Get back in here. You're with us. And I think that stops a lot of people. I agree with you on that, but I also feel there's a a, another perspective to look on it. And it's, um, it's even from a uh, a loving standpoint. Okay. So like there are certain people that come into your life for a purpose, whatever you believe in is everyone's choice, but you can have multiple different kinds of soulmates that come into your life to teach you something, but they're not meant to be there for the rest of your life. Yeah. So if you can remain kind of lovingly detached is one of my favorite phrases for a lot of reasons, but it, that also is what you can kind of think of in terms of the people who come into your life help you to a certain point, then they might leave your life. And I think what happens with a lot of people is we try to cling or we think that we're supposed to hang on to everybody, but that's not always the case. Yeah. yeah. And while you might, while it might not be the same group that goes with you, the opportunity I think is that once you sell some businesses and once you really don't have to worry about compensation anymore in your life, you know, there are two things that happen. Number one is, okay, now what I what do I need to manifest, right? right. So that's, that's the first thing. But the second thing is that you get to bring a whole new group of people with you by through mentorship and not making it about the money, making it about 
the impact and and that's kind of a really really cool opportunity yeah yeah and you're doing yeah and that's i think the next chapter of your well you've been doing it for 20 whatever years but the next chapter of your life is even more of that so let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of manifestation so i'll share a couple couple things with you i share with people that it, in order for me when i finally kind of got it and made the decision that i wanted to go from here to here there's 14 things that i did now i need to do a whole lot more work than addy does addy's just kind of natural at this it just happens her belief in herself is a lot stronger than mine and so i had to build that muscle and so there's a bunch of stuff things i had to do every day on a daily basis which is by the way which is what this is your book yeah. is really all about and i want to talk a little bit more about the the daily stuff but people think that well oh, i could just go read a book or i could watch a youtube video or i can go to a seminar and i'm done or i can hire a coach or a consultant where you know somebody came up to me at an event and and there's somebody that i recommend working with that works on energy and he said oh i'm working with sydney is her name and so great how's it going he said well yeah i think it's going really well i said so what about your results and he said well you know anytime a answer starts with well you know it's not going to be good and i i asked him i said are you doing the daily work the daily work and he said no i'm not and i said well that's probably why the results aren't happening and so there is a very defined process for manifestation do you mind kind of talking us through yeah through and, that? And, and i think you used the perfect word when you said muscle it's like anything else that has to do with um improving the more you practice at it the stronger you will get so you can strengthen your manifestation muscle but it's just like exercise you can't think well i'm going to exercise today and then i'm fit and then i never have to exercise again right yeah so it's it's something that i highly recommend that people look at it as a as a practice right so it's just something that you do every day it just becomes a ritual and one of my um philosophies is that it should be something that you really enjoy doing and that you look forward to and if you miss a day you 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 know it you you miss it so my planner is based on taking everything you know the, like your goal and chunking it down into daily activities but part of that is because you need to spend time every single day thinking about dreaming about your goals and your aspirations and the tasks that are necessary to get you there and by the way practicing we talk about practicing not practicing is practicing yeah not practicing every day towards what you're trying to accomplish is practicing how not to become what you want to become and yeah. it's not a muscle that anybody should really want to build so you know it's an interesting concept yeah, but I think a lot of people, here's here's the other thing that you'll hear me talk about, the shoulda, woulda, couldas. So I think a lot of us create these goals that we think we should want to accomplish or that, you know, we could do them. But we if we're not authentically connected to our goals, then it's not something that we look forward to working on. Tell me more about what you mean by authentically connected to the goal, because that's key absolutely so authenticity I, I i talk about it all the time because the ultimate goal is that we should live a very authentic life right we should live the life that we were meant what we came down into this human body to experience that's what we should really try to figure out what that is and to live by that authentic standpoint if you are in that you, everything else is going to flow from there right so you're going to want to work on your goals if it is truly what you feel is your destiny but if you're chasing something that you're not connected to what's the motivation you can only use discipline so far you have to have something you have to have a spark uh inspiration to achieve it yeah we, we see that often in business and i'm sure you see that too brian how often do you see business leaders that are so, so busy doing things that they probably shouldn't be doing in their business and you know and it, and the more they do that the more it takes them away from who they authentically are or could become and 
you know, so again, it's all about choice. Well, right? and, and, and that kind of ties in to like personal development. I think so often people think that they should be working on their flaws, but maybe it's wiser for them to really strengthen their natural talents. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So this is kind of like your why, isn't it? It's yes. understanding, well, why do I want, let's use an easy one. Why do I want a million dollars? Or why do I want to live in a particular neighborhood? Why do I want my kids to go to a certain school? Is that kind of how you connect with that? Uh, that a, authentic- a million percent. Yeah. And I think the deeper you can go into your whys, and I say there's layers of whys, probably at least three layers. And so I recommend that you know you write out your why for accomplishing some goal, but then ask yourself, well, why? Do you feel that way? Yeah. So you keep going down in layers and layers and layers until you hit something that feels that authentic thing. And that authentic thing is going to be some kind of emotional reaction. It's going to be either you're either going to get extremely excited. You you know, sometimes it brings up tears. It, it might hit something that's really deep, a deep core thing inside of you. And when you understand what that is, then you can decide if that truly is something that you want to accomplish, or did you want to accomplish that to prove that person who hurt you said you're never going to be anything? You know what I'm saying? Like, if yeah, you oh, absolutely. Yeah. That core truths, that's when you really know that you've hit your authentic feelings about something. Going back to the comment about, you know, working on your weaknesses, that is such a waste of time. So for so many people, because not only are you, you know, doing the thing you're not great at, the thing you don't like, but the energy that you're expending and putting out into the world, waking up every day to do something you are not passionate about is just taking you farther away from manifesting what it is that you truly want in your life. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I think the one thing that we all have in common, going back to the why, is that we we understand the emotional roller coaster of trying to sell a business, right? We yeah. understand that process. Or Very build a, or grow a business that just feeds our families. Right. All, all of that. Yeah. But yeah. you know, when people tell me they want to sell their business, the first thing I ask them is why? You know, because yeah. because we we know that if they're doing it just doing it for the money, that's a very different, you know, I'm one of the goals that to decide to sell Tundra Land is look, the business was so big. See, if I get hit by a bus, I don't want my wife trying to run this organization. You know, I had to be very clear with what what my reasons were because it also powers you through some of the complexities of, of deal making. And I think whether you're trying to grow a business, you, you know, it's one thing to say I want to make a million dollars next year. It's a whole nother thing to to be connected to why you want to make it. And Kathy, you brought up emotion. And unless there is an emotional component to it, then you're not there yet. You have to get some sort of emotion. What's funny is in your book here, I'm going to read a sentence. It says manifesting our goals is easier when we align our emotions to our actions. When we align our emotions to our actions, And a lot of times people will, you know, Brian, you hear this all the time. Well, I want to do $10 million in my business. Well, why do you want to do $10 million in my, in your business? And they don't have a great reason for doing $10 million in their business. To me, a great answer is, well, because I want to make $1.5 million in, in net so that I can put a great team of people around me, pay them really, really well. And then the business doesn't rely on me. And then from the profits of that, I can move my family into this house and then we can go travel and we can fly in the front of the plane instead of the back of the plane. And we can put half a million dollars a year away in our wealth account so that we don't have to work for them. That's a great answer. And that's emotionally charged. But so many people are like, well, why do you want to do $10 million? Well, because it's a nice number. It's just it's just a number. And I think the other part of that is really pragmatic. So, okay, so you know what your goal is. You broke it down into achievable tasks, milestones, like you were just referring to, Brian. But along the process, as anybody who has sold a business knows, it it's a journey. And there are certain decisions that have to be made along the way. Well, you kind of know uh, which directions you should be making those decisions based on what it is you're ultimately trying to get to. So if you don't know that, it makes the decisions harder. Yeah. That's true. Clarity is so important. 
So there's a couple of things that we started to talk about at the beginning that I think are really key. And going back to working together and and supporting and believing in each other. I don't know how many couples, couples in general, but then also couples that work together are aligned and understand, hey, one of the things that, again, I know, and I know it from you guys too, is that you guys are each other's biggest cheerleaders. The belief that you have in each other is part of the what makes you so powerful. I think that's, you know, me and Addy have that too, because I'm her number one fan and she's my number one fan. And I know it every single day. What are some things that maybe somebody that's listening to this is maybe they don't feel that connection with their partner. What are some things that they can do yeah. to bring this topic up? Cause it's not an easy thing to talk about. I've had couples sit here in front of me and I've made them have the conversation with me. Yeah. It's not an easy topic. So how do you bring it up? What are some of the things that you talk about in order to get aligned? The first thing is, and I know that my wife's going to have her own opinion on this too, which would be great. The first thing is, and you used the word earlier, you said team, you know, that, that it's a, a team. That's the first thing to understand. Okay. Yeah. It's not, this. it's not a hierarchy. It's not an org chart. It's a team. And the team is pulling in the same direction because that it starts there because if it doesn't start there, then there are going to be reasons to compete. And I, I don't need to compete with my wife nor yeah. her competing with me. Yeah. I was just going to say that I, I, I see in a lot of couples who work together, I see it in younger couples where they start to compete against each other. And I think that's a real dangerous place to be because you want to complement each other, not compete. Unless yeah. if we're driving home from the store and taking two different cars, we might see who gets to the garage first. Yeah. That, that's very that's different. a little different. That's, that's just some fun. of us have some competitive issues. <laughs> yes, so. yes. I just let him win. It helps build his self esteem. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it's the simple things. Yeah. 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 So you're busy. You've got your business. You've got the kids at home. You've got bills. You've got all of this noise and all of this stuff going on. Yeah. Did you guys have any type of like specific time of the week that you would get together? Cause I know, you know, you had a house full of kids. Did you guys have specific times that you would get together? Did you have date nights? Did you have retreats? How did you guys do it? I think we've learned to do is that because especially early on in the, especially in the home improvement business here, you know, you're the, you're the sales manager, you're the sales rep, you're the you're the service technician, and your phone is blowing up all the time, right? It's just all yeah. night and in the middle of dinner and all that kind of stuff. And I think, you know, ultimately, first of all, there has to be an understanding that, you know, we're doing this for for the future and there's an agreement that this isn't, you know, and then of course we have to personally figure out how to separate ourselves from some of that. I and mean, because this is not sustainable long term. But then I think it's more about, you know, it's more about when you do connect, connect. And and be fully present when you're present versus at 4 p.m. on Tuesday, I am present because that is might not isn't always realistic based on how life throws curveballs at you. But when you're there, be there. That's what I'd like to say. And I would say some more practical recommendations that we implemented in the early years where we did do date nights, Saturday nights, and that helped us reconnect but it also gave us a time to say okay we're gonna like look nice we're gonna spend time together and especially when he was traveling a lot there was quite a few um years where he was traveling almost three weeks out of every month that for women it's kind of like well who is the stranger who just barged into my house like you've got to like reacquaint yourself with each other and you know after the first glass of wine then i'd be like oh yeah i kind of think he's kind of cute and he's kind of funny i guess i do like him yeah. you know and it really helps through some of those very busy years that we had yeah so and, and i think the other thing that we really enjoy doing is sharing our days with each other and obviously we have very compatible like things that we like to talk about and listening and sharing each other's good times and and some of the struggles and just really listening to each other and we like to do that over a glass of wine but you know it, to each yeah. of them however they want it or two okay. good for you finish that bottle <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so did you what was it like when you worked together at tundra land because there was a time period where you were together 
that was in the early days, right? When especially when we were trying to, you know, there's, there's a story to be told. If if it were up to me, the we we needed to do some rebranding because we were called Sunroom Design Group, and I had come up with this name. I thought Love Builders would be great. Love Builders. And we're in the bath business, so we can have like the love tub. And it was, yeah. so I had this whole marketing idea around it. And my wife, who's also my my greatest, you know, a consultant too, and, and, and you know, has, has, and I need she she suggests that's a terrible idea. <laughs> Let's not do. That. So, so look, you know, we we so really, if it weren't for her, Tundra Land, the name wouldn't exist today. So yeah. it's just pretty interesting. So, but look, I think that we were. I think we've always worked well together because we share the same outcome, you know? I, I, and to that point, I could say, and to what you were kind of referencing, Addie, is that when we did work together, there was about three years where I built the marketing department up for Tenderland, but then we had enough staff that I could kind of pull back away and, you know, really think about what I really wanted my life to be about and my legacy and my destiny, which is a you know wonderful opportunity. But there was also a time when I'm a real strong personality. I have the way I like to do things. And obviously, Brian is the same. And so there were some times, if I'm completely honest, where I realized that maybe we were doing a little bit too much of this. And I made a decision that I prefer to have a husband versus a business partner so that this was his business. I'm going to let him lead it. And um, that was part of my decision to kind of pull away out of the marketing department. I never wanted to compete or butt heads with my my husband. So I made that choice. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for couples that do work together, it's just to be mindful of what is it that you want the most out of your relationship. Yeah. And also trust in each other's brilliance. Like he trusted your marketing sense to not do the love tubs. (laughs) <laughs> he's like oh she's been doing this for a while she's more the creative maybe i should listen to her about Tundra somewhere Lab. somebody right now just bought lovetuss.com <laughs> right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i wonder I if it's out there well in the poconos you know where it don't they aren't they known for that you know maybe that. vegas you know <laughs> yeah there you go vegas too <laughs> and that'll be our next business okay <laughs> So it's really all about this idea of, you know, the thing that I just really love about you guys is that you're dreamers and you're not afraid to dream and you're not afraid to dream big. And I think some people are, I think they're afraid to dream because they're afraid they're going to fail. And any thoughts on that? Like what, what advice would you give to somebody that's, you know, maybe deep down inside, they've got a desire, they've got a dream in their heart, but they're just like stuck. Like, how am I going to ever make that happen? To me, that's the worst question you could ask is how, but what are your thoughts on that? How do you talk to somebody like that? And what do you tell them? I'm actually writing a book that talks about this, learning how to believe in yourself. And it is a practice you can get better at, like everything else. You can get better at believing in yourself, but there's this thing where you have to nurture, you know, mind the gap between who you want to be and where you're at and where your current mindset is and learning how to bridge that gap. And part of that is a very intuitive, easy process. And I'll just plug my planner Yeah, because this is all focused on journaling about your successes, right? Because if you want to be successful, focus on what you're currently successful at. And then it expands in your reality. So if you can see what you're doing right every single day, it builds your belief system in yourself. And those people that have visited catgottlieb.com, K-A-T gottlieb.com, have purchased these journals and I really and really enjoy them, by the way. Shameless, but that nice shameless <laughs> plug in there. I, I love, love it. it. I love, I love it, it, it because it's hard. It's hard to put into action when you're having these conversations, when you're listening about manifestation and you've never really thought about it or you've been struggling with it. So a resource is so important and it could be something as simple as just, you know, r- daily reminders, daily practice. So it can be very intuitive. And that's yeah. the kind of the thing uh, about my planner that is you don't really have to overthink it. And I think that's probably what most people do wrong is we overthink the process. Right. Yeah. You know, well, and that's and- where the, yeah, that's where people try and figure out, well, how am I going to get there? You don't, you have no flipping clue. Like uh, today, 
you have no idea whatever your goal is but you you're you're you have you have a hundred dollars in the bank but your goal is to have a million there's no possible way you could figure out how you're going to get there yeah. but the thing that you can do is you can become the person that has a million dollars in the bank and then as you are every day working that muscle you will start to see things showing up that were probably all around you but you just weren't aware of them and that's where something like i think journaling comes in and for the we'll we'll give people if anybody's interested in getting uh kathy's book will or cat's book we'll put it on uh in the show notes we'll put a link there is it on amazon too yeah it is. Oh, okay. So you can just go to Amazon too and look up Cat Gottlieb and it's there as well. But, but you know, Brian, if I may, what, it gets easier. Achieving does. dreams yes. actually gets easier because you start to, once you start to achieve some dreams, you realize, oh, I can really do this. I can really do this. Yep. And, then, and then the dreams be, start to become bigger and you just, they're easier to achieve. And that's, you know, that's, that's the magical part of it. Yeah. Really. Once you start achieving, you, you get the confidence and then you keep going, you know, it gets bigger. Yeah. You have right. more confidence can, to take and, the next step. Yeah. And if I can, you know, none of this stuff came easy to me. It was very, very difficult. I didn't really get it. I was like 96, 97% of the way there, but I didn't get it until I was in my forties. And one of my favorite, if you guys don't, don't mind, I'm going to share one of my favorite quotes and it comes from Jim Rohn. And he says, become a millionaire, not for the million dollars, but for what it will make of you to achieve it. And that's all about talking about who you become. And in order for you to become somebody new, uh, you know, you have to believe in yourself and you have to work on that belief muscle. And it's not easy. It's a lot of work. And in some ways, it's almost easier to build a sales team than it is to, to build enough of a belief in yourself that, hey, I could become a millionaire. What happens is the whispers of self doubt start yes. to come in, right? Yep. And this is why, when you go back to who do you surround yourself with, right? Because I need the voices of positivity to drown out any whispers of self doubt. That's and right. That's where, that's where relationships and partnerships, you know, between a, a husband and a wife, a team, you know, soulmates. That's where that's where that really, really, really counts. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well. Addy, any final words? No, it's just been so wonderful to sit with you guys and have this conversation. I think it's not talked about enough. We all focus on those skill sets that we have to improve and dreaming, manifesting is such a big part of that. And uh, any last words, I just dream. And if you're going to dream, dream big. That's what I want our community to know. <laughs> it was our Addie? pleasure and honor to yeah. be here, guys. Yeah, thank you all. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys so much. Love you both. Thank Thanks. You guys. Us That's too. Cute. For everybody listening, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you are interested in the journal, not only, well, this is the old one, but there's there's a newer version of it, but it's <laughs> beautiful. I mean, you see it on screen now. It's just beautiful. And it's Kat Gottlieb, G-O-T-T-L-I-E-B.com. Or you can go to Amazon and just, I'm sure it'll be easy to find on Amazon. And we'll put a link in the show notes as well. But thank you so much, you guys. This has been awesome. We got to do this again sometime. And to everybody listening, you know, Brian, Brian said something really important there. He said it does get easier. And for me, it took really focused work for about 18 months to achieve something that I was always dreamed about achieving. It always eluded me. But once that happened and I proved to myself, hey, this stuff really does work, then you're right, it became easier. And so for those of you that are listening, this is practice, this is work, but once you do it, your life will be unimaginably incredible as it should be. As you deserve. Yeah, as, as you, you deserve, deserve. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Almost a little magical too. Great. All right, guys, thank you so much. Everybody listening, until next time, this is Brian Kaskavalsian, and this is the Wealthy Contractor Podcast.